get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Atari, and some of the top direct response marketers, Joe Sugarman, Ron Popeil, and many more. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com that helps service-based professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants, dentists, coaches, even copywriters, stop just trading time for dollars and shift from one-to-one client work to -to one-to-many. Rise 25 is an accountability and group coaching program and retreats as Jim thinks I was doing it from a lobby of a hotel, but this is actually from one of the the retreats that we do here. Um, And it was founded by my business partner, John Corker, and myself, where we bring together like-minded entrepreneurs from different client-serving backgrounds. You can go to rise25.com, check out more, and we have, you can download your free dream product ladder, which helps you map out your dream business on one sheet of paper, so check it out. And I'm very excited. The buzz is all about Jim Edwards and funnelscripts.com. So today we have Jim, Jim Edwards, who's a top direct response marketer, entrepreneur. Uh, Jim started back in 1997 writing eBooks and today has a very popular software product that helps shortcut the process of writing copy for e-commerce, webinars, and much more. You can find it on funnelscripts.com. You know, what's interesting about Jim, we were talking, is he's been on the forefront of different industries. So usually what's happening with eBooks, webinars, whatever it is, he's probably into it, you know, who knows, three to five years before it becomes popularized, and I guess, Jim, your mom test, which if your mom has heard about it, when she heard about ebooks, you know it's time to move on to, to something else. It was uh, time to go when my mom started talking about writing her own ebook and publishing. And I said, ooh, wow. <laughs> it's definitely mainstream. That, that, that profit gap has closed. It's time to find the next thing to do. Right. You know, you know, we often talked about successes and your successes, Jim, when I'm doing my research are compelling because you've gone through a lot of challenges. You know, after you had success in real estate and mortgage banking, you left the industry to launch your own business um, early on. And a few in a few short years, you, I guess, put it lightly, lost it all, um, the, all lost everything that you acquired. And there was a struggle there. And on top of it, you throw on a heart condition that land you in the hospital and you had to declare bankruptcy. So I want to start there. I mean, you know, two to three years, you made it all back. Um, but you were, it was a real low point there. Um, so oftentimes we start with the big successes and skip over some of the big challenges you have to fight through. Um, can you take me back to, to that time and like how you push through? Well, you know, it's interesting when I actually, when I got out of college, I, I, was fired or, or quit from seven different jobs in the first 18 months I got out of school. I got a degree in history, which qualified me to do absolutely nothing. The best job I could get was delivering pizzas for Domino's. And so I was, I sold weight loss for Nutrisystem. I, I was a telemarketer. I sold insurance and securities and, and I sold all this different stuff. And I, that was really when I learned about sales because once I figured out sales, then I went to work in the mortgage business. It's funny. I sold a, a lady. I was working for Nutrisystem and I sold a, a lady who was interested in losing some weight. And um, she said to me, you know, you'd be really good in my business. I said, well, what the hell? I, I've been in every other business. What do you do? And she said, well, I, I, I'm in the mortgage business. She told me about it. I said, you know what? I think I could sell money to people who really want money. And so I ended up, um, I was 23 years old. I was making six figures, had my own house, had a, a paid for Acura. I mean, I was wearing $400 suits back in 1992. I mean, I had the world by the tail. And unfortunately, I thought that I had the world by the tail and thought I knew everything. And so I, you know, I said, hey, I'm successful at this. I'm smart. I'll go do this other thing. So I got involved in a business with a couple of friends of mine and managed to lose everything, then rack up a whole bunch of debt because I figured it was going to turn around. And we ended up, um, I ended up having to declare bankruptcy and I was living in a trailer park. So I went from paid off car, paid off house to living in a trailer park. That sucked. But when things like that happen, you tend to become reflective. And what I realized was that I had gotten away from one of the key principles that applies to if you want to sell anything to anyone. And that is, 
you got to understand who do you help and what problem do you solve for them? Mm -hmm. And if, if you don't know, you know, what, what problem do you solve? Who do you solve it for? And how do you solve it? Those have been my three guiding questions that I ask myself, especially when I'm looking at any type of either a new website or anything like that. But it's, you know, what problem do you solve? Who do you solve it for? And how do you solve it? So once I kind of got that back in my mindset, I was exposed to the internet and I wrote a book on how to sell your house yourself. And I tried to get it published by a, a publishing house. 40 rejection later, letters later, I just threw it in a drawer and forgot about it. And then I was at homecoming in 1997. I was drinking beer with one of my fraternity brothers and he said, yeah, my dad and I, we got a um, advertising agency uh, up in New Jersey. And he said, we just got a web server. We're going to start doing web pages. I said, what's web pages? And he started telling me about the internet. Well, I said, do you think I could sell my book on the internet? He said, well, I don't know. Why not? So that really started this journey of figuring out how to sell because that's really what it, it came down to was figuring out how, how to sell. I had the book done. When I first sold it to people, I was sending them literally, you, you'd laugh, but I was sending them the Word document. I, there was no PDF. There was nothing. They got the word, the fully editable Word document they got from me. <laughs> and I sold it to this guy and he said, hey, you can use this other thing and that way you won't be giving people the Word doc. And so people helped me along the way, but I was just doing it. But the, the big thing that I learned, the, mind sh the mindset shift was looking at a group of people and not thinking about what they could do for me, but thinking in terms of what problem do they have right. that I can solve that I can charge them for. And that is when everything just, just when that gelled and then I figured out the skills to be able to do it because understanding that and then having the skills to communicate. And I mean, you, we're talking back when I was processing my orders, my credit card orders through my aunt's craft store at the mall at that time. There, there was no online credit card processing unless you were, I mean, I was straight out of bankruptcy. Well, there was no, no Google then. I mean, there was no Google. There, yeah. Yahoo wasn't even really a big thing. There was no pay per click. You basically could maybe buy some banner ads, and there was a site called GoTo.com. So it was really a four year figuring all this stuff out. And I got up to the point where this thing was was paying for, um, you know, it was paying a house payment, two car payments, and a, an electric bill, but it was still a, a big, uh, it, it was still a big struggle. Then I was introduced in February of 2001, I was introduced to the concept of a one-page sales letter, which we all take for granted now, but back then, that was some cutting-edge stuff, man. I mean, I had a 50-page website I was trying, I was selling this book off of, and then I, I, saw, I saw the light. I mean, I literally, I saw, oh my God, it's a sales presentation. It's a sales script. It's the same sales presentation that I used when I was selling insurance, when I was selling weight loss, when I was selling on the phone. It was like all these gears went in my head went chink, 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 chink. And I changed in one day. I took that 50-page website, I converted it into a one-page website, mm. and sales went up literally overnight 250%. Now imagine that. You're selling, and then all of a sudden you make a change like that, and literally sales went up two and a half times overnight. And I told my wife, I said, I'm 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 gonna figure this out. Yeah. And a bunch of other stuff happened. Well, I was working real quick, Jim. So I was doing some research, and one of the early, I guess, mentors was Marlon Sanders. Yes. Right? Yep, what did What did absolutely. he tell you? Marlon, Marlon was really the person who I saw using a one page sales letter. And so I was working for this company and it was, it was literally at a, at a conference in Boulder, Colorado in February of 2001. I was speaking at that conference. I was working for a guy. Um, and I was the vice president of special projects for a search engine company. Very fancy. And I had developed a product to show people how to get a number one ranking on Yahoo, which back in 2001, man, that was the holy grail of traffic was Yahoo. Right. So we had this product and I was there. I had to speak and I was selling it and stuff. And I saw Marlon and I saw him do this presentation called The Amazing Formula. And it was basically his thing of one page sales letter. So I was talking to him in the hallway and, and, you know, I was giving him a copy of my product for his thing. And I said, yeah, I just, 
a couple things I, I don't understand about bonuses and other stuff. He says, I love this dude. I mean, Marlon Sanders is a great guy. He says, Jim, that's the way he talked. He's like, Jim, all you have to do is just give away their USP as a free bonus. If you want to kill the competition, give away the USP as a free bonus. And and that was another one of those that the heavens opened up. And, and it's like, Duh! because – with my mortgage, with not my mortgage product, my real estate product, all these people were, you know, spending money on mortgage calculators and listing their real estate, and and a couple other things. So what I did was I went and found software that I could give away. I, I got the rights to it, so I started giving that away as a bonus. I started giving away um, property listing pages. I started giving away um, forms that people would use to sell their house, and my sales skyrocketed again. Wow. So. That was that was a big thing too, and that's a, a rider downer. If for everybody who's listening to this, it's what, huge. whatever, yeah, whatever your if you have a competitor who's kicking your ass, whatever their USP is, all right, don't steal from them. But whatever they're selling, you figure out a way that you can give what they're selling away as a bonus if people buy from you, and and their children and their spouse will be out on the street before you know. It's very satisfying. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. No, I'm not playing. I'm dead serious. Um. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I had a lot of mentors as as we as I went along, um, and and I also learned with copywriting that it originality isn't what gets you paid. It's it's understanding the proven patterns in sales copy that work. And so the the problem is is that, and this is this is where a lot of people run into issues. Yeah, is that typically people who are awesome copywriters are have trouble explaining how you can write copy too. It's it's kind of like do the best football players make best coaches? Do the best salespeople make best managers? Um, and and so that was was my thing is I could see them doing it, but I needed to figure out how I could do it for myself. And so what I started seeing instead of trying to write like them, I started looking for the patterns that they used and adapted the patterns for for what I was doing. And that's when everything really took off as far as my ability to create copy quickly and, and do it. So instead of trying to write just like them, I was looking for the patterns that produce the result. Yeah. So and that's sorry a big, if I'm kind of scattered. I, no, this is great. You know, a lot of writer downers. I mean, j just the fundamentals, Jim, right? Which is who do you help and what problem do you solve, right? People just skip over those things. Sure they do. Right? So Because they think I'm going to get rich. I mean, th that's the thing. They They... They think they think they go from the product or the service. This is the product or service that I'm going to offer. Now I got to go find an audience. And what you need to do is reverse that. Go find an audience with a hellacious problem. I mean a bad problem, not a hangnail, okay? When someone has a hangnail, they're going to go to Walmart. They might stop at at Starbucks first and get a little something to drink and then they Go through the Band-Aid aisle and, oh, maybe Not I'll get some bleeding that type back. of problem. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I want somebody whose arm has been chopped off. It's hanging by a little piece of skin. All they can do is call 911 and have the ambulance show up. They're not going to ask the ambulance driver, hey, man, how much is how much some bandages going to cost me? How much is this ride going to be? How soon is it going to be for right. me to get home? How many people have you done this before that had this type of injury have you worked on? No. I want somebody who's in such bad pain that from the headline alone, they're going to go, holy crap, as long as this doesn't look like somebody who's advertising from jail, I'm going to buy from him. You, you see? Even if it's that urgent, they probably would get that, yeah. Well, they do have e-commerce stuff from jail, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting, though, uh, Jim, with the proven patterns, right? And that's typically in your career, you follow proven patterns. You're not trying to you know, reinvent the wheel, whether it's someone who's an expert in one field. And that's kind of what's baked into Funnel Scripts. If anyone goes to funnelscripts.com, I believe you can watch a webinar. And if you watch that, you actually go through and it spits out like actual copy that is oh, probably yeah. based off of proven patterns, You know, whether it's warning, blah, 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 the truth, blah, blah, blah. So talk about early on, you had this idea. What was the first iteration of you trying to bake this into a software because that seems it's not an easy task 
Well, this wasn't the first iteration of of doing this type of software. I mm -hmm. came out with a product back in the mid 2000s. I don't know what the hell you call them. It was easy when it was the 80s, the 90s, and then it's like, what are these? The thousands? <laughs> I didn't know what that was. So about 2005, I came out with a product called Mini Site Creator, and it was really really popular. But it was one of those things. It was it was you had to do everything by hand. It was it was even writing the copy. So when I came out with Mini Site, Mini Site Creator version 2.0, that was the first iteration of doing software that that if you filled out a form and you whacked a button, it would give you a result. In this case, it would give you one page sales letter. It would give you what we call an ask page, uh, a most burning question campaign, and then also um, what we would think of as basic, a basic opt-in page. So that was my first time I did that. And then I developed these scripts called Easy Online Wizards that would, would do this stuff. So this funnel scripts really was this evolution over 10 years almost before it really came into being of, of just hundreds of different scripts and blueprints and patterns and swipe files and other stuff like that. So what ended up happening was um, my buddy Russell Brunson wrote a book called Dot Com Secrets. And in this thing, he he just gave away the store as far as all these different things that he figured out how to do patterns that he figured out. And uh, a buddy of mine said, Hey, read Russell's book. So I read it. I contacted him on Facebook. I was like, dude, this is a damn good book. And then one day, literally I was out fishing with my wife and I was reading the book and I said, Oh my God, I need to take these scripts that Russell's put in here and I need to turn them into software that people could use. And I had it. I had, created a site around that but just not with his scripts so i contacted him and i demoed the stuff that i had and i said i can take what you've done here and i can turn it into software that people will be able to use and i showed him a couple i made and, and he he couldn't say yes fast enough and so that started a year-long process of taking that book and turning it into software and it started out with 19 scripts when we launched um funnel scripts now we're up over 30 scripts along with four downloadable um, pieces of software. So that's kind of where the idea came from was I had been doing this and, and developing this. So I didn't just yank it out of thin air. It was, this is an evolution. And then when I saw Russell's thing, just all the timing was right. And uh, so that's, that's yeah. where it came from. Do you guys partnered then on funnel scripts then? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're 50, 50 partners on it. And, uh, uh, we launched it February of 2016. So what's the most popular? Because there's a lot of different use cases, right, within when you get into funnel scripts. I know people are using it for e-commerce, webinars. What, what have you found is, I want to find the most popular and also use cases you didn't even think until people started getting in and actually using them because probably people are using it for things you didn't imagine. Um, the the script that's the most popular are the headline scripts because mm. that's the thing that every single page on every single funnel needs. No matter what kind of a funnel you're doing, um, you got to have a headline. So we actually have uh, – I was looking at it right here. But we've, we've got uh, one, two, three, four – we've got four different headline scripts uh, in there now from to help you make headlines for sales copy, e-commerce pages, uh, if you need short headlines, if you need stuff for, for content. So that's the one that I kind of intuitively knew was going to be popular, mm -hmm. but it didn't realize it was going to be, you know, that's, that's where most people start. Yeah. The one that has really, that people really, really love is the, the one where we help them write Facebook ads and mm. you, you kind of take cool. things for granted. And so, but we have, um, we have a script that helps people write Facebook ads for, and this is, I think what makes the big difference. Most people teach you how to write Facebook ads. Okay. But it's a one size fits all. But what we do is we actually make a distinction between hot, warm, and cold traffic, which is something nobody else does. Hot traffic. And this is a, a concept that came from Eugene Schwartz. Uh, one of the pioneers of, of the modern sales copy. Hot traffic, they know who you are and they know about your I product. Right here. Well, well, there yeah, you go. There you go. Breakthrough advertising, yeah. Um, and so hot copy, they know who you are, they know what your product, they know the name of your product. So you write ads that people know who you are and your product. Warm, they know there's a solution out there, but they're not aware of you or your product yet. And cold traffic is they don't even know their solution, they just know they have a problem. 
just by helping people to make those three distinctions, we've been able to help some people just revolutionize their business because now they're running the right ads to the right people. And yeah. by the way, the ads are actually good. Right. So that's the one, honestly, that's been the most satisfying because that's, again, where most people fall down, no matter what they're trying to sell, is not in being able to create a product because people can create products. There's so many courses out there. There's just so many tools. You, you can be blind, crippled, or crazy and still create a great product. I know that's probably not a socially acceptable thing to say anymore. I'm sorry. Um, you could say but, what you want if you have like a hundred, you, you have a gun range <laughs> in the back of your house, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, but that's the, the big thing now is if you're going to be an author, you need to be a best-selling author. You need to have a best-selling product. In order to do that, you got to be able to drive traffic and be able to drive traffic. you got to be able to run ads. you got to be able to write emails. you got to be able to write teasers. you got to be able to write follow-up email sequences. you got to be able to create graphical ads. So that's a whole other bunch of stuff that we have in Funnel Scripts that helps people because most people will make their product, and then there's this little switch inside their head that, that flips off, and they think – Oh, well, it's done. It's like I did my work. Uh, it's like the worker mentality, not the salesperson or marketer mentality. And I, I tell people all the time, you are not an author who sells books. You are a marketer who sells books you happen to have written if you want to make any money. Okay. You're not a drop shipper. You are a marketer who sells products that you happen to drop ship. And that's a distinction mm. that most people can't or have not made. And that's where Funnel Scripts really fills a need to help people to understand or, or to bridge that gap. Yeah. Because all they have to do is just fill out a form and they, they answer some questions by filling out a form. They whack a button, they copy and paste, and they're, and they're good to go. And so it's something good that you actually use is better than something that might be incredible that you never create. Yeah. So, I mean, we talk about headline scripts, Facebook ads. So at what point, uh, talk about the e-commerce side, because this is a number of people ask me about funnel scripts used for e-commerce. How long well, does it take you to actually create? Because you have to probably on the back end stuff, create all these you know fields and algorithms or whatever. So it spits out what it needs to look like if someone's using it for their Amazon bullets or descriptions or whatever the case is. Right. Well, I was fortunate enough um, to meet a, a gentleman, uh, Ben Cummings, who is a big time expert in uh, Amazon, selling on Amazon. So what I was able to do was sit down with him. We spent some time together. I, you know, I basically did like what you're doing. I, I researched him. I went through his stuff. And then I kind of I deduced the patterns from him. And then and we sat down and, and we created an amazing script that somebody can fill out for an e-commerce product, you know, a physical product or, or whatever they might be selling on Amazon or selling off of their web page or on a Shopify store or something like that. And you can literally just fill this thing out and it creates your description. It'll create your uh, title for your Amazon listing. It creates all your bullets. It creates your call to action. It creates everything. But again, I didn't just yank this out of thin air. I I actually took a proven blueprint. It's almost, it's almost like I reached into his head and slurped out the, the blueprint and the pattern and then turned it into software. Yeah. What did you find was interesting in your e-commerce research with him or in general that, you know, he maybe couldn't have detected without you kind of pulling it out? I think the, the biggest thing is that when somebody's going to a site like Amazon or shop a Shopify store or in a in an environment where they are they know that this is about buying something, it's not you know hey I got this free report for you and then kapam I'm going to show you this video that's going to magically make you want to buy. It's, it's a somebody medium. goes to yeah so, right somebody goes to Amazon. They're looking to buy something. I'm sure there are people that go on Amazon just, oh, wish list, wish list, wish list, wish list. You know, it's, but most people, like my wife, show up with the credit card. And I was just like, hey, you know, I want to buy something. Yeah. yeah, you just I'm, click a I'm, button. I got Prime, baby. Let's get our money's worth. Um, <laughs> and so what 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 that means or what it, what I saw was that it takes less to sell. In fact, more content, more sales copy can actually impede your ability to sell. However, 
what copy you do use needs to be very, very benefit oriented, not really feature oriented, which again, when people get on Amazon, they get on, on any of these sites. If you don't know how to write sales copy, they want to tell you, you know, our, our gun oil has a 0.32 viscosity and, and, you know, distinct applicator. And you just want, it will shoot people <laughs> coming onto your stoop it, faster. It, it keeps, Whatever. right. It keeps your, yeah. it keeps you from, from allowing your children to be sold uh, into slavery, like on game of Thrones. I mean, it's allows you to, to protect your family. It allows you to protect your firearm investment. So, so really the biggest thing is yeah. Benefits. to do what yeah. other people are not doing. Because if you look at most listings on Amazon, they're, they're all about features. But if you look at the real popular products, Unless it's a, a name brand that they're spending millions of dollars for, you'll see the pattern that they're selling the benefits, they're selling the payoffs, and they only list the the features or or what we would consider the 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 detail type stuff all the way at the very end, almost like an afterthought. Yeah, yeah. That was really the biggest thing because I hadn't sold a whole lot on Amazon. I well, I take that back. I had not sold a lot recently on Amazon. A lot and of with all the type of stuff, but not maybe the physical, physical not the products. physical stuff. Yeah, right. And and the stuff that you can do with your listings and your titles and your bullets and all that stuff, you can have a real impact on whether you're selling anything or not, as opposed to the old days when Amazon made it really hard for you to be able to to put some sales into your sales copy. Yeah. Jim, talk about, talk about the decision. You know, if you go to Funnel Scripts, you can sign up for a webinar. What's the decision there about? having someone watch a webinar as opposed to someone just buying, like someone's ready to buy right now after hearing you talk about this? Um, well, I mean, I can give you a, a link that they can go to just to buy, but the big thing is you got to understand it's, it's kind of like when I bought my truck, I bought the truck because I liked the color and it would tow the trailer that my wife convinced me to buy and it matched the, the interior matched my Rolls Royce. So I said, <laughs> okay, I got a big white truck. Me, it it was at the time actually. Oh, and the back window on the you know, on the back of a pickup truck, you know that flat window on the back? Yeah. I can hit a button and the whole window goes down. And when I saw that I was like, Oh my god, I gotta have it. But then what happened was after I bought, I I started seeing all these things about it that was actually a really cool truck, that it, it had adjustable headlights and it had a tow package that makes it easy to go up mountains and whatnot. But I think if I had known that, I would have bought with more confidence instead of just, a, oh, I guess I can fork out 55 grand for this truck just because. Um, but I might have felt better about it at the time and I might have gotten more use out of it sooner. And also, if I tell you that funnel scripts cost ten thousand dollars, you're like, oh my god, that's too expensive. But then if I told you, well, I'm not going to charge you ten thousand for funnel scripts, but some copywriter is going to charge you ten thousand dollars minimum to write a, a twenty page sales letter for you, is that expensive? And you might say, oh, that's mm -hmm. expensive. And somebody else might say, oh, that's too cheap. And somebody else might say, well, I guess ten thousand. If I can make twenty thousand from doing it, it's worth doing. So it's all it's all relative. Yeah. But once you Give understand, a little perspective, yeah. Right, but once you understand that that funnel, you know what what the real deal is with copy. And let me tell you, I'm, okay, I'm gonna piss some people off right now, but that's okay. Let me, I'm gonna ask you a question. Why would someone who is capable of writing a sales message that can generate a million dollars in sales, why would they write that sales message for you for five or ten thousand dollars? Why would they do that? Are you asking me? Yeah, why? I mean, yeah. well, I could think of a few, but one is their talent is in this, maybe not in business building. It's just in writing copies. So there's a lot so of you want someone. That's bullshit. Yeah. If they if they know and if they know, then they're doing it. And that's why I tell people I'm the greatest copywriter in the world that I ever hired. There are plenty of people who write better copy than me, but I'm the best one that I ever hired. And I figured that if anybody was going to be able to, to do $100,000, million, and $10 million sales letters, which I have done, it needed to be me, not me paying somebody else and praying that it would work. So that's my first question you, you need to think about, all right? Seriously, someone who can write that level of copy ain't going to do it for you for $10,000. Oh, for sure, yeah. Plus, you're going to have to wait in line 
to be able to, to get them to work for you. So it's not like you have the, you don't have the flexibility to be able to say, Hey, damn, I got an idea. I got an audience. I got a problem. I want to solve a way to do it. Let me run this out there and, and just see if it'll work. And so that's, that's the first big point. And I can't remember the second point. So I'll think about it and just, I'll, it'll come back to me in just a minute. No, the second again? point is C point number one. <laughs> C point number one. Yeah. So that's, that I, I kind of went off on a tangent and I lost my I like train of thought tangents. and I apologize. You know, I like the tangents. Um, it, it's basically you were saying if you could, you know, someone could write it like a 10,000 or, you know, make a million dollars off uh, writing a, why would they do it for someone else? You know, they'll just do it for themselves and probably right. not, not be hired. Yeah. I mean, that's what Gary him. Halbert said. If you want to, if you want to write, I don't remember the exact quote, but it's basically if you want to make a fortune, you're going to need to learn how to do it yourself yeah. because otherwise you're going to wait in line for a long time and you're going to pay a crap ton of money. Yeah. So, oh, you were asking about the, the other thing is understanding about watching why we're doing the webinar instead of just saying, here's what it is. Yeah. You know, you need to understand, get the perspective on what copywriting is and, and why you need to um, be good with it yourself. And then you also need to see how something works. You don't buy a car without test driving at first, hopefully. Um, but so you need to see how something works, see what it does, see yeah. how it how it performs. So that's yeah. the other reason. So then you know you've made a good decision. Right. Yeah, I just like, you know, I always observe smart marketers and what not always what they're saying, but actually what they're doing, right? And so in this situation, that's what you're doing, you know, and to know some of the behind the scenes thought process of why that is. Well, one of the best time, one of the best things you can do from a sales copy perspective, if it is at all possible with your product, is to demo it. Is if if you can, and you might think, oh, how's a demo sales copy? How's a demo not sales copy? If you can see, I once bought a five thousand dollar shrink wrapper based on a twenty second demo video. Mm. I mean, think about that. So if you can show somebody, again, back to what problem do you solve, who do you solve it for, how do you solve it, and if you can say, you know, hey, Jeremy, I know you need to write a sales letter between now and Monday, and you have limited experience in creating sales copy, so let me take two minutes and show you this cool piece of software that you basically just fill in a form and whack a button and it kicks out the first draft of a really good sales letter. Oh, this is the other point I wanted to tell you. This is the thing you need to understand about people who write sales copy. People who write sales copy use these things called swipe files. And so anybody who's going to write a sales letter for you, the first thing they're going to do if they know what they're doing is they're going to ask you a crap ton of questions. All right, They're going to send you a 10, 20 page questionnaire asking you all these questions about your product, about your market, about features and benefits and payoffs and background and your history and why they should listen to you and statistics and testimonials and all this other stuff. And you're going to spend hours filling this thing out, right? And then they're going to give you back a sales letter and you're going to say to yourself when you see all your own stuff regurgitated to you in these little chunks and patterns, well, holy shit, I could have just done that myself if I'd have known what the patterns were. And I would have said, no, duh, yes, you could. So that's the other thing that will really <laughs> right. piss you off. You pay somebody ten grand, you answer a bunch of questions, and then it seems like they're just copying and pasting out of the questionnaire. That will get your blood going. Love it. Thanks, Jim. So trends. I want to talk about trends because obviously – you see trends because you're in the industry, you know, maybe two or three or five years before someone else. What's going on now, you know, in related to, obviously also because you have these customers coming into funnel scripts in different industries. What are you seeing now with funnel scripts that maybe you will introduce into funnel scripts or that you're just seeing in terms of patterns um, in business right now? The big thing is shorter it doesn't take 20 pages to persuade anybody anymore. It, it's get to the point. It's hitting the emotional hot buttons with people. It's hitting the benefits and the fears and, and, and the desires and doing it quickly because people have the attention span of a gnat now. Think yeah. about since 2007, what's that thing in Facebook that they call, what's that called? Your news? The news feed. Feed. What's it called on Twitter? It's your Twitter... Feed. feed okay 
people's attention span has gotten s- smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's the whole feed mentality. So what? instead of having one giant sales message that you put out there that's good for weeks or months or years, you literally have to come up with little sales message, bite-sized things that keep going out that are trying to hit people on whatever hot button to get them to take the next phase, the next step that you want them to take. And that's the other thing is that everybody's got to think of this. I mean, that's really why funnels are so popular now is because marketing is very incremental. You you have to th- view it as as stages where, you know, the first stage is to get somebody to click off of Facebook, LinkedIn, email, whatever, AdWords, all these different things. Then the next step is I need to get them to opt in. Then the next step is I need to get them to convert. Um, I think that's one of the trends that I don't think is ever going to go away. It's just got to happen faster. And the only way it can happen faster is you've got to understand your customer better than they understand themselves so that you can accomplish as much in 20 words as it used to take two pages to do. It's like Mark Twain said one time, you know, I wrote you a long letter because I, I didn't, you know, I was short on time. Right, exactly. Uh, if I would have written you a short one, but I didn't have enough time to, right. to really think it through. So so the shorter messages take more thought, You you so you need to pay attention to the patterns that get you. One of the ways that you can do that that has nothing to do with funnel scripts, though everybody should be using funnel scripts, is pay attention to what gets you to stop in your feed. Because if we, um, if, if we're... In our own audience, which we really should be. I mean, I, I know that some people are like, oh, I'm going to be in the wedding niche. I'm going to be in the travel trailer niche. But I've been, never been married and I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm scared to go outside, but I can do it. But normally we're in our own niches. So yeah. pay attention to the stuff that gets you to stop in your tracks in that feed. That, yeah. that to me is the, is the biggie. The other thing is being able to close in person. Facebook live video, being able to, to do short videos where you're able to speak persuasively. And, and speaking persuasively, again, it's just a script. It's yeah. just knowing what to say. It's like, hey, Jeremy, now that we've talked about Facebook, I'd like to invite you to come over to Funnel Scripts and watch a presentation about how you can create three different types of Facebook ads in literally two and a half minutes. So – Go ahead and click the link real quick, and I'm going to give you a little quick presentation, a lesson on what I do in order to to get click-through rates as high as 9%, which is 4,000 times the average uh, click-through rate on Facebook. So go ahead and click the link. So, I mean, that you, you've got to be able to come up with those and, and be able to use them again. And you don't get rewarded by being original. You get rewarded by being effective. So shorter, more impactful pithy and understanding that you have to come up with multiple sales messages and use them rather than just having one that that's going to be your you know i wish i was an oscar meyer wiener you know that coming up with that kept a company going for 20 years now it might keep you going for a couple days (laughs) that's a scary thought um the uh so jim system i want to talk about systems for a second because you have a lot of ideas you have a lot of features, things that you're adding into the product. How do you keep track of all of them? Oh, that's easy. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I have. Oh, where's my piece of paper? Ta da! I have a list. All I do is just write stuff down. It's not, you know, it's not rocket science. I, I have a feature list of things yeah. that I want to do. Um, I have a feature list of things that people ask for, um, and then I mean, uh, you know, I just write it down, keep it, track of it on a piece of paper. There's nothing magical about it. It's just I just write it down. But it's based on what users are telling me that yeah, they want. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering because some user could say some off the wall thing. How does it make they it do. on the list? You have to be like, okay, I have to hear this from like five people before mm. I actually do it, or no, know. it's more. I look at it as a user because I use funnel scripts all the time. That right. that's a funny thing. I use I am the biggest yeah. user of funnel scripts there is. And so like the other day, I needed to create a script. I was actually wanting to do a case study. So I needed to do a case study to um for another product I had and I said, Okay, 
I need to do this case study. So what questions am I going to ask? And then I said to myself, self, and myself said, yes. I said, so we can either do this once and we'll forget about it. Or what we can do is we can make a script to make a case study. Yeah. And then we can let everybody be able to make case studies. And so that's another where they come from, too. I, I know that if I need it, probably somebody else would need it. Yeah, and then and then explain to people, you know, what's the difference between a testimonial and a case study and feedback, and and so there's also a lot of education that goes along with this too, is uh, explain to people what you know how to use the stuff, and and why it's important, but then if I have five or ten or fifteen people saying, hey, I wish it did this, then then I yeah. pay attention to that as well. Yeah. A lot of times you have to scratch your own itch, and uh, sure, it allows you to do it over and over again. Jim, I really appreciate your time on this. And uh, I know we only have a few more minutes left so you don't get yelled at by your wife. So um, I wanted to ask two questions and then point people towards where they should find out more about you, whether it's frontalscripts.com or any other places. Uh, the two last questions, one, I always, you know, since it's Inspired Insider, I always like to know uh, a low point and how you push through and then a proud moment. And um, I know we talked about the, the hard point on the business side, but you also had that health scare um, that happened. Earlier. Yeah, I, um, I had a – I woke up one morning and my heart was going 180-some-odd beats a minute in the top. You were young, The bottom right? couldn't keep – yeah, I was 30. Wow. Um, and I had just been under so much stress for so long – there was a family history of this type of thing. It's called atrial fibrillation. Mm, um, yeah. I wasn't aware of it. It's like as soon as I was in the hospital, oh, yeah, your grandfather had the – thanks. I wish um, I would have known that. But, but, I mean, when you're sitting in a hospital bed, you're not even 30 years old. I was still living in a trailer park at that point trying to turn everything around. And I just realized at that moment, this was still when I was trying to make that business work with some partners. I just realized right then, you know what? What I'm doing right now is not working. And instead of trying to fix, it's like you're at, I'm at the end of my rope and I'm trying to hang on and climb back up this rope. I need it, It's not holding it like this. I'm just holding it like this. I just need to drop it. And I need to really sit there and, and, and just make the changes, even though it's going to hurt. Mm. And so we had, you know, I got diagnosed with a heart condition. Within a couple, three months, we declared bankruptcy. Um, just couldn't keep going anymore. But what came out of that was some real clarity of, I know I'm where I'm supposed to be. Mm. I mean, this was in 1996. Um, or it was 97, 90. I don't know. I need to, anyway... I don't like to dwell on that stuff because I'm just not the kind of person who, who dwells on that. Some people can tell you wrote and verse of the day and date and time and the doctor's name and all the shit that's happened to him. I just kind of, it goes off, you know, one of these things. But, but I realized I was in the right spot, but I had to bear down even harder to figure out what I was supposed to do. Yeah. And, and what I realized I was supposed to do was help people who were not technically inclined but needed to get the results that I could figure out how to get it. So that's really been, if you want to get down to the core of who Jim Edwards is, I help non-technical people use technology to get the results they need to get. And I call it the liberal arts side of the internet. So so that's that's a real huge positive that came out of a real bad negative and and then something that I would just I would I would caution everybody. And again, I'm not a doctor, consult your whatever. But a lot of times you'll get a you will get a diagnosis from a doctor. You don't necessarily have to accept that as your fate for the rest of your life, because I took medication for 14 years that I should not have been taking. Mm. I should have gone to see another doctor. That I was taking some real powerful beta blockers and they caused me to put on a ton of weight, caused me to have terrible mood swings, caused just a lot more problems than they solved. I decided I was going to get into shape, started getting into shape, but was still taking this medication and almost ended up dying as a result of the medication. Wow. 
because I had it sent me, you know, you know, when you hear those pharmaceutical ads on TV where they're, you know, may cause rectal bleeding, may cause a, a severe <laughs> decrease in blood pressure, may cause you to bleed from your ears or, or you know, right, jump yeah. off a cliff. Well, I had that happen to me. My yeah. blood pressure dropped down to like 40 over 20. Wow. The only reason I'm alive is because I was next door at my next door neighbor's house at a party and his daughter is a paramedic. Wow. And I collapsed and she was standing next to me when I collapsed wow. and she saved my life That's right there. Crazy. So my po my point though is is that you can <laughs> don't ever let something like that define you. Let it give you clarity and then figure out how to change your life and change your circumstances. Now I'll be 50 this year. I regularly run half marathons. The last half marathon I ran, I ran with a 35-pound plate on my back. Wow. Um, I can do 20 pull-ups in a row. Uh, I mean, I I've totally changed my life through the power of my mind. And so just, just yeah. take – don't – most people look at the low points and let them define them. Let the low point define you in a way that gives you power to drive you forward to get better. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Jim, thank you. Thanks for that powerful story. I appreciate you sharing that. We will defer the proudest moment because I don't want you to get yelled at by your ah, wife. I'm good. So. I'm good. She'll wait. She'll be all right. Proudest, proudest moment so far. My Did proudest you, yeah. moment, my proudest moment ever um, was when my son-in-law, and if I tear up, well, get over it. My son-in-law uh, was in the Army. He was in the National Guard. Uh, they were deploying to Iraq. And they didn't have the equipment that they needed. Uh, they were going over. They didn't have a ton of stuff that they needed. My wife and I bought a lot of equipment for an entire company of National Guard soldiers. We oh. bought them lights. We bought them cameras. We bought them. Um, we bought a ton of stuff. I mean, tens and tens of thousands of dollars worth of stuff. And. I was able to do it without even thinking about it. And so in October of 2007, um, we got the email that nobody wants to get that, that your kid had been hit by a roadside bomb. Oh, yeah. Five of them in the truck, two of them were killed. The other three were really screwed up badly. And so my son-in-law, he was driving when they got hit. The other two got blown out, killed. The others were burning inside the truck. He mm -hmm. crawled out the top started returning fire from the, the hood of his truck. And um, he had put his own tourniquet on. Medic runs up, grabs him off the truck, throws him in the back of the ambulance, turns on his headlamp, looks down, sees that John's um, tourniquet is on wrong, adjusts it, stops the bleeding, wow. and comes up to the um, commander the next day. And he says, I just want you to know, whoever gave us those lights, they let him know that it saved a soldier's life. Wow. He said, you're not going to believe that, but that the people that gave that were his family. And so my proudest moment was that I was able to do that, to use the money that we have made. And I've made a lot of money. I'm not white trash, trailer trash anymore. I'm, I'm white trash living in a nice house. <laughs> <laughs> you can take the trash out of the trailer, but you can't take the trailer out of the trash. But... um. My proudest moments have been the impact that I've been able to make, yeah. not the things that I bought. You know, I, I've got it. Believe it or not, I've got a Rolls Royce sitting in my my uh, garage. I thought you was. I, I thought you were half kidding about the interior no. matching. Your... No, it matches the truck. Oh my gosh! But the but none of that really gives me the pleasure of being right. able to help somebody and being able to have an impact on somebody's life. Yeah. And so now, like whenever I go out to dinner, I like to pay, not because I'm the, you know, oh, I'll, I can pay. But I remember a guy when I was selling insurance, when I went to a training and I had no money, I was going on fumes and I got invited to lunch and I said, you know, I, I, I don't have any, I can't go to lunch. I don't have any money. And the guy said, don't worry about it. I'll buy you lunch. Yeah. And I don't remember the guy's name, but I just remember that generosity and, and having, being able to impact people. So I would tell everybody. Once you have made it, number one, don't believe you've made it, all right? You're, once you start doing well, though, it's important to make a difference in Get the back, world yeah. and, and to make a difference that really is in ways that are important to you because that's, in the end, the only thing you're going to remember is the impact yeah. that you had on the world. And so just 
that's yeah. what I would say about that. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Jim, that should be on every single webinar you ever do at the end. Be like, I mean, not in a self-serving perspective of you should buy funnel scripts, but I mean, one of the reasons why you could have, you saved your son-in-law's life and other people in that arena is because you were able to sell things, you know, in an effective manner. And, and, uh, that's the most powerful thing, which is that impact. So thank you. There you go. Jeez. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This was fun. So people should go to funnel scripts.com anywhere else we should point them towards. Um, if you want to see the musings of Jim Edwards and whatever yeah, else we should. have, you can, you can go to the Jim Edwards method.com. Yes. Um, Great stuff there. You should check it out that you put some stuff on uh, Earl Nightingale, some videos there and some of your thoughts. So everyone should definitely check out the, G the Jim Edwards method.com and specific slash blog. And you can check out your musings and everything else. So Jim, I'm very grateful. Thank you so much uh, for your time. Thanks for having me. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other.